Like a wise man once said, death is a future in Eldering. It's not a bug. It is a frustrating mechanic, but at the same time, it gives you the opportunity to reflect and grow in the game. However, it's perfectly natural that you'll feel disencouraged after dying dozens of times to the point that you ask people online or your friends for help, in which they will respond to you to just simply get cute. So what do you actually do to get cute? Especially in a game like this when every boss and enemy is different. Well, in this video, I will give you nine crucial tips that apply across the entire game and that you can apply in a general sense, even if every enemy is different. And that will help you out with winning more fights and will make dying an afterthought for you. The first tip is spending more points in Vigor. No matter your class, whether you're playing a ranged, a melee or a hybrid class, Vigor is going to be extremely important. Start spending more points in Vigor early and especially in the moment when you feel like you're losing more fights than winning fights. Vigor is going to help out substantially for the simple reason that you have a bigger health pool and thus, if you make mistakes, you will be able to take more hits before you die. And trust me, even one extra point in Vigor can be detrimental for you losing or winning the fight. 100% get more Vigor, it's one of the biggest and easiest tips to implement. At level 40, you will start getting diminishing returns and you will hit a soft cap at level 60, so keep that in mind as well. And basically don't go too overboard with it. The second tip is to not panic roll. Panic roll is a mistake that can be deadly for you in many scenarios. Panic rolling like the name implies means that you roll out of panic and not necessarily as a response to an incoming attack. The reason why you really do not want to do this is because you are rolling without a thought essentially and that can hurt you because you don't have influence over when you leave the roll animation like this. When you leave the roll animation you will be vulnerable to getting hit as you don't have iframes anymore and seeing as you don't control it because you're just spamming the roll button it's going to give the enemy free hits against you. That will in a lot of scenarios just make you lose the fight. For the third tip it's going to be to consider rolling towards the enemy and not away and this is mostly for our melee players. It might seem counterintuitive for newer players but against a good portion of the enemies it's going to be better to roll towards the enemy and there are four primary reasons for this. The first one is very simple and it's just because you can just start attacking faster after they finish their attack and you come out of your roll animation. Number two, a lot of bosses will generally be more vulnerable when you flank them and that's when you are rolling towards them that will be easier to do so and you can backstab enemies more easily that way as well. Number three, some enemies have a lunge or a thrust attack that even when you roll away you will still get hit by it. Rolling towards the enemy will nullify this mechanic and you won't take any damage. So definitely important to do versus enemies with a thrust or a lunge attack. And number four, rolling towards the enemy can actually just be a way of hiding yourself. Think about when you're fighting against giants and you're below them. They lose control and sight over you and it makes it easier for you to hit them. And in the third and fourth case the tip also Definitely applies for casters by the way. But in a general sense you still will want to watch the enemy's mechanics closely because some enemies might follow up the attack you're dodging with a different type of mechanic or attack that is specific to that enemy and in those cases they will still hit you when you are near them. So it's contextual but definitely good to consider in many scenarios. For the fourth tip it's going to be to study your enemy's weaknesses. Take a good look at your enemy. Take your time. What do you see? What are their weaknesses? Do they have breaks between sequences of attacks or mechanics that leave them extra vulnerable? Many enemies will have some sort of weakness, like the example I just gave you with the giants. Their size is intimidating, but it also makes them slow and it makes them quite oblivious to the things that are happening right under them. Many enemies will also have something that is off. Just by inspecting them you'll notice this. Look at the fire giant's left ankle. It's bruised and covered and he has a limp of some kind. Attacking his ankle will let you deal more damage and make things easier. Ranged mobs will usually deal tons of damage, but following traditional RPG elements, they tend also to have less HP. So if you are able to reply with a ranged attack of yourself, you should be able to kill them off very quickly. And versus some of the more aggressive or very aggressive enemies in the game, sometimes you just want to kill them. It's going to be useful to be aggressive yourself. Certain enemies will also fall down after you stagger them a few times, giving you a lot of room to hit them hard for a period and do as much damage as possible. You should immediately go as crazy as possible in those periods to win fights much more consistently. And outside of just specific weaknesses, a lot of different types of enemies also have general weaknesses. For example, undead enemies are weak against holy and fire damage. And versus armored enemies, you will want to use sorceries or strike attacks over slash attacks to be extra effective. It can get quite deep and it's probably not worth changing your playstyle with every encounter, but it's an additional layer worth considering if you have the options. 
for tip number five it's going to be get as much knowledge as possible honestly dying on purpose isn't even a bad idea sometimes versus some of the more intricate bosses you'll want to have a good overview of all their mechanics before you start fighting that way you'll know exactly what to expect at any time and get to know how intimidating your opponent really is there is always going to be a limit to the number of attacks and mechanics that a certain boss will have and gaining as much knowledge about this will make the fight a lot easier for yourself and like the saying goes knowledge is power and with more knowledge about your enemy's rotation of attacks you'll get to know how and when to strike your opponents and defeat them accordingly. Tip number six is going to be not being locked on. Not being locked on can be very useful whether you are a melee player or a caster. Uh -huh. You lock and unlock your camera when you press R3 on controller. So if you're locked then your character is completely focused on the movements of the enemy that you're fighting. And when you press R3 to unlock your camera then you essentially get more freedom in how you move as you're not fixed to a certain axis. And with this new freedom you have more oversight of what's happening around you. So it's easier to dodge but you're also now much less likely to get hit by something that you otherwise would have not seen. I have to say though, as a caster, being locked can be very useful, especially for those very aggressive or small mobile enemies, because you will automatically cast your spell to the new location when you are locked, instead of having to manually aim it and move the cast from the position it had a second ago to the new position of the enemy. So assess the situation and depending on what you are playing as and versus whom, consider locking or unlocking your camera. The next two tips are related to when you are using your horse, because a decent amount of combat is also when you are mounted. Tip number seven is about changing your weapons when you're mounted. So when you're mounted, and this is probably mostly relevant for casters who have their staff in their main hand, and you want to attack with your other weapon to actually do more damage, then this is easily done. You can switch over to your other weapon using LB plus Y. This way you can hit the enemies with your sword instead, or just in a general sense, the weapon that you actually prefer hitting them with. Every time you press LB plus Y, you will switch again. So it's a handy way to make sure that when you're mounted, you're able to attack with an effective weapon and not just the one you have in your main hand. And for tip number 8, it's going to be the iframes you get when you get off Torrent. Torrent is your horse and when you're mounted, you obviously can't use your roll to dodge attacks and sometimes just sprinting away from an attack won't cut it. Think of those AoE attacks that are just too big to run away from. This tip is an incredibly useful thing to consider as it can 100% make you live or die in a fight and I think a lot of people don't know about it. When you press L3 when you're mounted, you will dismount and in the period that your character is busy dismounting, you are invulnerable to damage. This period of being invulnerable is what I called before iframes. With that information in mind, you now have a way to make sure that when you're mounted you can always prevent incoming damage either by using your horse to just jump or sprint out of the way but also if the hitbox of the incoming attack is just simply too big to use this dismount trick for tip number nine it's going to be to get stronger if all of the previous tips do not help you out too much or they all just suck then definitely go explore more get more runes loot do quests and get rewards get sacred tears and golden seeds to help you out with your potions get better gear and loot get more levels and come back and simply as a result of doing something as natural as exploring you will level up and boss fights will automatically become easier as well and it will also make you good in the sense that your character just simply has become stronger you are now better than before with this set of tips you now have a solid foundation to tackle any enemy in the game. Honestly every boss and enemy is going to be different anyway so there's no real formula that's going to make you instantly win versus every enemy in the game. And a lot of it is also just experience and time that you will just get gradually. But I do think that following these tips will make you have an easier time winning fights. And yeah that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and that you learned something useful. Give it a like if you did that would help out a lot. Subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments.